I've been having a lot of fun talking about the Sega Genesis Mini, which is the brand new mini console that Sega has worked on with M2 to do all kinds of great emulation and to create a very good sense of what it was like to play video games on this console back in 1989 and the early 90s. Seminal console, so important to me and so many other video game fans out there. And it's been fun to dive into the library and the collection. I've talked about the Genesis Mini in a review. I did a little micro review of all 42 games. I did the top 10 games that I like the most on the Sega Genesis Mini. I did a comparison between the Sega Genesis Classics collection that's out there for the Switch and the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And I thought it would be only, it's only fair for me to talk about my 10 least favorite games or the 10 worst games that are on the Sega Genesis Mini. And before I get into the list, I have to clarify that this doesn't have to apply to you. You have your own favorites and your own least favorites. I also have to say that it was difficult to put together 10 games that I would say I, I didn't really enjoy all that much on this platform. I think Sega did a great job at finding 42 cool games to put out there with this console. There's a tremendous amount of value with the games that are collected there as well as the hardware that's all put together for fans out there. But let's talk about the 10 worst games on the Sega Genesis Mini. Number 10, and this cuts deep, it's going to be Eternal Champions, which I am a big fan of, actually. I did Sega's quirky fighting game starring Sega's quirky superheroes. They were all custom made. They didn't use any of the licensed superheroes, although Sega has worked with other licensed superheroes in the past. It's a six-button game that you play on a three-button controller if you play with the pack-in controller that comes with the Sega Genesis Mini. And it's, you know, it's a little choppy. It's not the most tuned. It's not the best fighting experience that out there. I do love it though, so it hurts me to uh, want to remove this, but I have to be ruthless. There are better games that I would have chosen to be on the Sega Genesis Mini than Eternal Champions, although this one hurts. <laughs> it hurts to take it off. It's number 10 on my list. Number nine is Kid Chameleon, another game that I really like. This was a game where you got to put on all kinds of different character traits by the different hats that you would put on your head, and you play this little sunglass cool kid who has all of these abilities. I remember loving this game when it first came out. It's dated, and the graphics are pretty blocky and chunky, and certainly not the best action platforming adventure title that's available for the Sega Genesis. I would remove that, because I think there are better games that you could choose for this platform. Number eight is Space Harrier 2, which I think is actually a pretty decent port for the Sega Genesis. But again, this is a game that I think is serviced better by, you know, maybe some arcade emulations. This was an arcade game that was kind of stripped down to the bare essentials when it came to the Sega Genesis. It's still playable and it's still fun and there's some great screams of horror whenever the little dude would run into things. <laughs> I don't know, there's better space shooters, there's better action experiences than Space Harrier 2. Number seven, and I think somebody upstairs is getting pissed off at my list because this rainstorm just hit me all of a sudden, is Sonic Spinball. This is a game that I just was never that big of a fan of. I bought the cartridge for my original Genesis back in the day because I was a huge Sonic fan. I like pinball. I like video game interpretations of pinball. But there was a sluggishness to this game, which was ironic because Sonic is so fast and choppy little bits to the animations. And I never felt like I had the tactility that I wanted. I never felt like I was bashing Sonic, who in this game plays a ball in a pinball machine. A great idea. Very cool. I love Kirby's Pinball Land for the Game Boy, which was a much better character-based pinball experience in my estimation. This game was just, it kind of let me down. There, were, I mean, there's some clever little side missions and little uh, side areas on the tables that you would try to hit to. There's okay music and stuff, but if I have to be scrutinizing and talk about my 10 least favorite games, unfortunately, Sonic Spinball is number seven. And I think I'll just wait for a second until this rain stops. Ah, oh, that's better. 
Number six is Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, and this one looks extremely dated. It certainly looks like Sega was trying to create something in the mascot vein with this game. I never played this back in the day, so it's kind of a new experience for me to play it in the compilations. It was also included in the Sega Genesis Classics Collection, and it's on the Sega Genesis Mini. There's got to be people out there that just have a, a huge fondness for this game and this series, because there were other Alex Kidd games that were made as well. But not me, man. I did not have fun. It looked too blocky and too dated. And frankly, there just are way better action adventure type titles out there. A lot of them are already on the Sega Genesis Mini. <laughs> Number five, and this is gonna really offend a whole bunch of people out there, I know, it's Altered Beast. This game blew my mind back in the day. This was a game that I could hold up and say, oh my God, on my home console, on my Sega Genesis at home, I have a game that looks as good as an arcade game. But holy crap, it has not stood the test of time. It is not a fun game to play. The bad guys look ridiculous. I mean, it's fun in, in its uh, the campy, cheesy kind of sense. And certainly, there was some pretty groundbreaking technology back in the day. The voice work and the transformational stuff was kind of cool back then, but it's just been eclipsed. And, you know, again, much better brawlers available on this platform that Sega could have chosen for the Sega Genesis Mini. So number five is Altered Beast. Power up. Power up. Number four, and again, this is a list that I know is going to piss a lot of people off, and I would love to hear your suggestions down below, but I'm giving number four to Strider, which I gave a pretty abysmal score to when I looked at it in my 42 micro reviews. Yeah, I did not like playing this game. I just felt like the collision detection was off, and I felt like the animations were incredibly choppy, and it just feels really dated. I mean, I love the idea and the concept of playing Strider again. I remember being just blown away by this game back in the day. There was that pretty solid remake of Strider that came out a few years ago from Double Helix. That was pretty cool. I mean, it's a good concept. This guy that can climb up walls and hack and slash. And I like some of the art design that's attached to this game. It's just not a fun game to play. It's just, it's sort of beaten down by its datedness. So sadly, number four is Strider. <laughs> Number three is kind of a heartbreak because I know that it took an extraordinary amount of effort for Sega to bring this to this console, but it's the Sega Genesis version of Tetris. It's cool that it's on there, but it's just that there's so many versions of Tetris and we've played so many better ones that it's anticlimactic. You load this up and it's like, wow, okay, I, I played a way better version of Tetris. I'm sure there's a better version of Tetris on my watch at this point, you know, like it's just not fun. <laughs> I guess you could find a little bit of fun if you played it with somebody else, but I was just not impressed by this, and the music is all wrong as well. Now, number two is another gravity-based puzzle game, which I think has been eclipsed by lots of other gravity-based puzzlers over the years, and it's Columns. It's not that this was a bad game. There were some interesting designs back then, but there's just so many match three titles and gravity-based puzzle games that you can just throw onto anything, and so many of them are free. Although it's cool that Sega had their own brand and their own kind of vein with this, I just was not impressed with this game. I remember being bored of it back in the day, and certainly decades later, I am more bored. Now, number one, I think you can all predict this one, Virtua Fighter 2, which came out for the Genesis. And I think it was created originally to kind of show off that, yeah, we can have, you know, almost the horsepower to create one of the state-of-the-art arcade experiences out there for our 16-bit console. And although there's some graphical niceties, there are way better fighting experiences, and this particular game is a game that should be enjoyed with 3D polygons. That was the whole thing about the Virtua series. And so Virtua Fighter 2, well, it's a terrible game. It's awful that they made space with this list of only 42 games, and they put it on this machine. There are so many other ways that they should have gone. So number one of my 10 worst games on the Sega Genesis Mini is Virtua Fighter 2. There you go. Now, please take a few minutes 
and put down your list of your 10 worst games that are included in the library for the Sega Genesis Mini. And remember, I'm going to do another video that are a suggestion of 10 other games that should have been on this console. So look for that.